first green card here seeker of sunlight one mana one one three mana seeker of sunlight explores active only as a sorcery pretty cool card honestly that's a pretty cool card generally um <clears throat> it's not what i'm going to be looking it's uh not a card that i'm going to be looking for strongly to begin with but you know maybe some decks have mana sync the main problem with it is just it's just that it doesn't do anything until you sink mana into it. Uh, I'm assuming. All right, Seeker of Sunlight. I believe that it's okay. Um, again, it's cool mana sync. I like the design space. I like giving uh, optionality. I like giving some potential to these cards that generally would not see any play. Uh, giving it, giving it a late game ability or like mid game ability. But yeah, in general, not that excited by it. I assume I want to be giving this either like a C minus or a D plus. I'll probably start out as a D plus. It just goes to show how strong Magic Gathering cards are these days. All right, next card here, Basking uh, Capybara. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a Capybara in the set. All right, two mana, one, three, descent four, basking. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Capybara. Basking Capybara gets plus three plus O as long as there are four more permanents in your graveyard. Damn, kind of a chonker, actually. It, so it becomes a four, three if you have uh, three, uh, four more permanents. I feel like getting four more permanents is really difficult. But, um, you know, I mean, this guy's fine no keywords on it or anything i'm saying it right all right it's just a weird word capybara it sounds so uh like i feel so so like valley girl when i'm saying it capybara like hey how's your capybara doing you know what i mean <laughs> like it de it definitely doesn't sound correct anyways Okay, so uh, I, I'm gonna give this card probably probably a D plus probably a D plus as well. It's a fine card, serviceable. I am not really gonna be looking for it highly. Uh, I mean, if there are strategies that really can get you to descend four, uh, very consistently, maybe you just draft a deck like this. So yeah, it it has potential. Next card here, Disturbed Slumber. It does look cute. <laughs> it does look cute. Mr. Slumber, two man instant under turn, target land you control becomes a 4 4 dinosaur creature with reach and haste. Still land and must be blocked this turn of able. These, these cards are always interesting to me. Um, I generally just never play them. I generally just never play them. And I never see people play them either, so I don't really <laughs> ever have any, any sort of strong opinion on a card like this. Um, it's. I don't know. It just doesn't do anything in Magic. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It just doesn't do anything. I mean, the force block aspect of it is pretty cool, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this card a D-. minus. Again, cards like this that generally are not good need some sort of incentive or synergy in order to make them good. So I got no idea. Next card here, Malamet Brawler. Two mana, two, two. When Malamet Brawler attacks, target attacking creature gains trample until under turn. Whenever Malamet Brawler attacks, target attacking creature gains trample until under turn. Huh. So, not a really flexible card, to be honest. Unless you care about a card being a Cat Warrior, which I haven't seen any incentives to be like Cat Warriors in other colors so far or anything. But, um, yeah, I really don't feel like this card is good. Uh, I mean, it has to attack itself as well. I don't think I'm going to be playing this card. I'm going to give this card a D minus. <clears throat> I mean, it's a, it's a fine card. It's nothing special, right? Absolutely nothing special. Hard to use. The incentives aren't really there. I mean, I mean, the problem is that it, it has to attack itself, right? And it has no keywords, it's just a vanilla 2-2. Two -two. Just not good enough in this day and age, probably. Yeah, green, not starting off too hot. So, let's see how it goes. Next card here, Over the Edge. Two mana sorcery. Choose one, destroy to our artifact or enchantment. Or, target creature you control explores. 
Then it explores again. Okay, so you can two mana to double explore. Kind of a cool card, actually. It's a disenchant or double explore. Double explore is, like, pretty decent, actually. The play patterns, I expect it to be kind of weird. Because you have to plan between getting stats and between uh, just, like, hitting lands or whatever. So, like... <laughs> Do I attack? Do I not attack? Am I gonna get a good attack or not? Um, it does my opponent have mana up? And am I gonna get blown out? Right. Uh, pretty pretty cool though. Pretty cool card though. Um, I mean, this thing can destroy an artifact creature, which is already pretty good actually, huh? I'm I'm gonna go start this card off as a C minus actually. The fact that it can destroy just any artifact and that there are a lot of artifact creatures especially like sizable ones in the format and especially sizable like uh meld or the what's it called it's like um it's like the polymerization with artifact stuff whatever that's the same one shirt yeah i i have like 30 of these shirts it's basically just the same one shirt i'm i'm actually just dexter from dexter's laboratory we have the same closet. But yeah. Um pretty 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 cool card. Pretty cool card. Uh and there's actually a decent amount of value on it. So I actually like it. I'm gonna give this card a C minus. Next card here, Poison Dart Frog. Two mana, one one reach. Tap. Add one mana of any color. Uh, two mana poison dart frog gains death touch in the turn. I love it, dude. I love this guy. This guy is, is is my homeboy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and get poison dart frog at B minus. He's got a lot of keywords. You've got to pay for death touch, but honestly, I like the design space of it. Like, there's no reason that uh, death touch always has to be free or whatever, right? Um, is it's it it's already decently. De decently uh, statted in all regards in terms of um, having an ability, having an ability, doing something good by adding, adding a rainbow mana, and then also ha also can stay relevant. So, and also he can pay for the, pay for the death touch himself. Northside memory, welcome back! Thank you so much, baby. Get it back for fifty four months. <laughs> welcome back to goddamn at Duel and Academy. Welcome to Exxon, baby. All right, Poison Dark Frog, and he's got B minus. Next card here, Staggering Size. I'm, <laughs> I've heard that a lot in my life. Two mana, instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. Copium, by the way. Uh, it gains Trample until end of turn. It's honestly, a very large pump spell, man. It's it's Titanic Growth, like a, a little bit smaller than Titanic Growth, but uh, gains Trample. I actually do like it. I don't know exactly how good it's going to be in a format like this, but pretty serviceable. Pretty serviceable. Um, probably still need to give it like C minus D plus though. But that frog wants to kill us all. True. It, it it's always hard to rate. Uh, it's always hard to rate combat tricks like this. But um. Yeah, I don't know. C minus D plus. Probably still in like D plus range. <clears throat> I think I need to actually give this card a D plus, And I think I actually need to lower some of the cards that we rated earlier. Like the one drop C Seeker of Sunlight. Probably down to just like flat D. Uh, yeah. Okay, something like that. The set has less removal than usual. I think it's actually a good thing for magic. I think the play patterns of like playing something, getting encountered or removed, and then whatever whatever survives in the end is actually like a pretty boring way to play magic. Uh whereas like if if a lot of the stuff that has to be solved is dealt with creatures itself, right? Like a lot of blocking, a lot of uh creatures people are playing creatures getting getting to do their thing and then figuring out how to solve the board with the creatures that's like a much better way to play magic in my opinion <clears throat> like 
that's kind of my philosophy. I think that that creates like much better um, and and much more memorable games. Um, like and nobody likes like being on the draw. Your opponent plays like just a few creatures. Everything gets removed, and then you die. Like that's kind of a dumb way to play Magic, right? <clears throat> Do we have a chat review? Give each of us a rating. Arctic, you're you are S tier, brother. That's all that matters. All right. Anyways, next card here: Armored Kincala. Three mana, three three is a Dino. Enters the battlefield. You may reveal a Dino from your hand. Wait, what? Enters the battlefield. You may reveal a Dino from your hand. If you do. Or if you control another dinosaur, you gain three life. Oh, kind of a cool card. Armored Kin Collar. Okay. Well, pretty unassuming. I, d I do like it, though. I do like it. I am starting to feel that 20 life and magic for modern magic gathering is way too low. So just having, like, random life gain, ra random, random ways to gain life that, that's not over the top, which this one is not, feels pretty good. I'm going to start this card off as a C-. <laughs> Definitely a build around, but, uh, you know... Ha some defensive tools for some uh for some deck sounds pretty nice. All right, Watley's final strike, three mana instant. Our creature you control gets plus one plus O until end of turn. Deals damage equal to his power to target creature and opponent control. So it's instant speed punch, not a fight. Um, I do like it. I mean, a little bit of a stat buff as well, plus one plus O. I do like it. Seems. Pretty good to me. Uh, starts card off at a C plus probably. Okay, next card here in presence of ages. <laughs> this art reminds me of Attack on Titan. You guys remember the episode? You guys remember that part of the story when they first discover that uh, Titans are in the walls? <laughs> okay, three minute instant. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land. Whoa, from among them at your into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. All right, so kind of like a buffed up grizzly salvage type card. I think that I think that these cards, like a commune of nature and stuff, in recent times have generally been unplayable. <clears throat> it's just like cards have gotten so good, especially with uh, cards that have adventures and stuff like that, where traditional card advantage spending a card to get extra cards is like has has felt pretty bad. So, like, they do have to push it, right? So this one puts cards in the graveyard. That's good for Descend. It's good for graveyard synergies, uh, like Soul Salvage type cards. Also, you can hit a land and or creature, which is extremely important as well. So actually, I do like it. Probably give this card a C plus. Uh, C or C plus, something like that. Still, still not a card that you can play too many of. That's just the nature of Magic at the moment. But uh, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Instant speed is also nice, that's true. Okay, next card here. Aslem's Stone Tree. Three mana, artifact. Enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. Put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, right? It's a ramp spell. Put the rest in the bottom in a random order so they do not go to the graveyard. Whoa, look at that! It has craft with cave, a six mana. Craft with a cave. That's pretty cool. Damn. Oh, it's just flavor text. <laughs> it's a five five. That's pretty cool though. They all like long ago abandoned the caverns to the mycoids, but the deep gods still keep watch over the spore strewn darkness. God damn, son. I like you. It's pretty cool. So it's just like a, it's it's just a mana accelerator thing, right? It leaves an artifact behind, and then it can eventually become a six, uh, a five five. I actually like it. I do like it. I like it. Cra Craft for the cave, maybe harder than expected. Probably not though. I like it. Um, what do you give this card? Maybe a B minus or something. <clears throat> Mana ramp on three is always so much worse than mana ramp on one or two. Not necessarily true. I think it's uh, I think it's very set dependent as well. Depends on the speed of the format, right? Um, mana ramp on three is very normal. I personally like it. Mana ramp on three being more normalized than mana ramp on one or two. I feel like mana ramp on one is kind of degenerate, a lot of the times. 
and it leads to like super high roll games, which feels fine for the ramper. <clears throat> but uh, I'm perfectly fine with like ramp and mana fixing not not being that good, like being costly. I think it's good. I think it's good. Mana fixing, mana ramp, and then uh, you can have a, a five five at some point. I like it. No, no shots card is better than last card. I believe this card is better than last card. So one of the things about Magic the Gathering is that cards, cards that give random card advantage are generally just fine, but they're also just replaceable, or or you can just do without it most of the time. Cards that cards like this that provide uh, some sort of direction, <clears throat> um, and is very core to certain game plans. Like I'm, I am obviously going to be trying to play a lot of five color as usual. Are much more important. <clears throat> so yeah. Oh, it's not limited to a basic land. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Put a land card. That's pretty cool. You can grab a cave or something as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think this card is actually pretty decent. I like it. I'm gonna, get, gonna give it a B minus. Next card here, a Malamet Scythe. Three mana, flash. Enter the battlefield, attach a target creature control. Creature gets plus two, plus two. And equip four. So it's basically a combat trick that sticks around. Leaves, leaves you an artifact either, or leaves you an equipment either to use again with the re equip cost, or you can uh, craft it with something. Generally, I'm not the biggest fan of cards like this. Uh, the, the, this one does look very serviceable, though. I'm going to start this one off at a C-. <clears throat> Alright, uh, next card here. River Herald Guide. 3-mana, three 3-1 three Vigilance. Enter the Battlefield, it explores. Uh, fine card, but like, kind of whatever, right? I feel like, I mean, definitely serviceable. Definitely serviceable can get you a two for one. If not, it's a four two vigilance, and it, it, and you get a scribe. But it still feels like super filler. <clears throat> still feels super filler to me. Probably starts one off at a D plus. Honestly, again, kind of showing just how just how far our magic has come. A card like this, perfectly serviceable, well statted, whatever, and has a keyword. I think it's. I think I'm gonna give it a D plus. <clears throat> I don't see how often I'm gonna put this in my decks, but yeah, who knows? Yeah, green not looking too good so far, in my opinion. But yeah, let's see. Next card here, Mineshaft Spider. Okay, four mana, three four reach. Enters the battlefield. You may mill two cards. It's a chonker, pretty big chonker actually. I do like it. I think I'm gonna give uh mine mineshaft spider a C plus. <clears throat> I like it. I like it. It's a chonker. Really like this is insane power creep if you think about it, right? Mammoth spider was a five mana three four reach and it didn't have an ability. <laughs> Actually kind of crazy power creep. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, it's like, I guess Mammoth Spider was a 3-5, but yeah. But uh, honestly, if you think about it, 3-4, three, 3-5, three, there's, no, there's, no, there's no difference. Next card here, Pathfinding Axjaw. 4 minute 4-3, enters the battlefield, explores. Oh, I, I do like this guy, though. So it can be a 4 mana 5-4. Or, or or you get a land, and then you can hit your 5 drops, 6 drops. Pretty cool card. I like it. I'm going to give this card a... Probably just give this card a B-. <clears throat> I like it. Pretty cool. Just uh, nice and clean. Next card here, Malamet Veteran. 5 mana, 5, 4, Trample, Descend, 4. When Veteran attacks, if there are 4 or more permanent cards in your graveyard, put a counter on target creature. I don't think I care about this guy. Again, cards that don't have like an enter the battlefield that are expensive are generally not good enough in this day and age of magic. I'm probably gonna give this guy a D plus to start out with. Like purpose perfectly fine card, serviceable, but it's just filler. Um I mean it helps if you play like three mana ramp or two mana ramp into this guy, but again, it's just not very 
Just not very necessary, it feels like. This card here, Walk with the Ancestors. Uh, that's probably not a walk that you want to have. Five mana sorcery, return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, discover four. Pretty cool card. Like Again, I like it, but uh, results are going to vary a lot. I don't think that I'm going to be that interested in playing that. I mean, it's a five mana regrowth, and sure, if you can discover a, f a three or four drop, it's going to be decent, but you often discover, like, uh, you know, one mana, two mana cards, or... Or even cards that are not going to be good on that turn, like a fight spell or something, right? So, yeah, I generally don't see me playing this. I'm probably going to give this card a D. Um, a lot of times when I'm looking at cards, I'm looking for flexibility. I'm looking for uh, consistency. This card is not it, right? <clears throat> but maybe you can build your deck in a way that like you always hit. I don't think it's that possible, though. <laughs> Next card here, Cavern Stomper. Six mana, seven, seven. Enters the battlefield, scry two. Okay. Four mana, Cavern Stomper can't be blocked with uh, creatures power two or less this turn. I mean, it's a large monster. And it gives you a scry. Pretty cool card, honestly. Like, mid-range something something. I will have to say that it's still pretty underwhelming overall. I want to give this guy probably like a C- minus to start off with. Discover feels hearthstone -y. Uh, I mean... I mean, what you're trying to say is, is that it's just RNG-based, right? But, like, card games are all RNG-based. It's just a matter of if we see the RNG or not, right? So, uh, I mean, it, it's a very normal thing in Magic as well. We just haven't seen it as often these days. Next card here, Nurturing Bristleback. 7 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Bristleback enters the battlefield, created 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token. Okay. Nurturing Bristleback enters the battlefield, make a 3-3 three, three dino. Okay. And has 4 cycling, too. I do like this card. It has a chonker. Good thing to reanimate as well. Good thing to ramp into. Uh, I actually do like it. There are no keywords, <clears throat> but um, pretty cool. I don't think we saw any flicker stuff in blue or in white. But, uh, I mean, I feel like this card maybe could have used Reach or something. But, uh, or at least, like, the 3-3 three, three gets Reach or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, this art does seem out of place. I think some of these arts are, like, kind of weird because, like, you go from hyper-realistic to, to, like, to, like, fun, fun and, fun and fantasy. <clears throat> But, uh, I mean, the day and age where, where, where you can just mana ramp and then play, play like vanilla big things, it's kind of over. So I do feel like these dinosaurs are going to go extinct. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I want to give this card C plus or B minus. I think one weird thing that I will also say about the Ixalan plane, one thing that I actually don't like is uh, the inclusion of vampires. Like, vampires seem super weird thrown in the mix, in my opinion. Like, I don't like it. Vampires seem super random to me. Like, vampires would be as random as, like, robots or something. The value higher than the 6-drop we just saw? Um, I think I do, yeah. I believe I do. Let's give it a C+. Hello, Barcha. How's it going? They're the conquistadors. They're they they're the conquistadors coming to claim like the like the unclaimed land or whatever. I don't really like it though. Don't tell me Rosanna, that we're hyper realistic ever again, true. <laughs> okay, anyways, moving on to the uncommons now. C note scout. One mana one one. Enters the battlefield and explores. Pretty cool card. I love this card. I think this card's awesome. Um <clears throat> Either one mana two two, you get control you get control of the board, or it can get you a land, which is perfect. Either way, it gets you closer to a land. I like it. Uh cards are awesome for me. I feel like I want to give this card a B plus. <clears throat> Still though, one mana two two is like whatever. 
I think. The the last ones are commons, and we're moving into uncommons now. It's really hard to tell by the set symbol. The set symbol is like very, very uh sort of compact, you know. Next card here, glow cap lantern. One mana equipment. Equip creature has. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. Okay. And whenever this creature attacks, it explores. Okay. Ah. Equip two. I like it, actually. It doesn't give stats. I mean, it kind of gives stats. I kind of like it, actually. What do we give this? I'm going to give this one a B plus as well. Uh, Pretty cheap overall. And I feel like it does a lot. A little bit pushed, but not broken. I like it. Let's give it a B plus here. <clears throat> I like it. Next card here. Ixali's Lore Keeper. One mana, one, one. Tap, add one mana to any color, spend a mana, only cast a dinosaur spell, or activate the ability of a dinosaur source. Seems a little bit convoluted, but I mean, you can draft a dinosaur deck, I guess, if you have one or two Lore Keepers. In general, I feel like it's kind of whatever. I'm going to start this card off, at, card off as a C+. <clears throat> Maybe even just a flat C, actually. It, it'll be good in decks where you spam dinosaurs. I don't think spamming dinosaurs is going to be good, though. We'll see. We'll have to see. Lannosaur L. That's, that's a good one. And next card here, Malamet Battle Glyph. One mana sorcery. Choose target creature you control. Target creature you don't control. When the creature you control enter the battle for this turn. Put a counter on it. Then those creatures fight each other. Pretty clean fight spell. Uh, play patterns are quite interesting as well. It incentivizes you to fight with a new creature, so, uh, a little bit mana inefficient, I suppose. Like, if you're, if you're on five mana, you have an option between, like, a four drop and a five drop, uh, or a four drop plus fight spell instead of a five drop, like, you might be, uh, you might be incentivized to do the four drop instead. Pretty interesting. I mean, I do like it. <clears throat> Probably just give this card a B, I guess? I'm not sure. I haven't really given any A's to green, actually. Next card here, Twists and Turns. One man enchantment. If a creature control would explore, instead you scry one, then that creature explores. Okay, so this enchantment allows you to scry before exploring. When Twists and Turns enters the battlefield, target creature you control explores. Okay. What is happening here? When a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands, transform it. <clears throat> okay. My Mycoid Maze. It's a cave as well. Tap out of green. Four mana tap, look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature card from among them, put that card into your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. So a creature searching effect that we've seen time and time again. <clears throat> it's just a super explore card. I mean, it has to be good, I think. It just has to be good. Like you get paid off, like more paid off for exploring. So there's like an explore mechanic, I guess, or like explore uh, archetype to some degree. When answers battle for creature control explores. I mean, I don't see why you would never not play this. The cost is one mana, and you get everything. You instantly get your money back. Like this is basically like if if somebody came up to you and was like, "Hey, I want to sell you this twenty dollar bill for uh, ten dollars. Would you buy it?" Like, yeah, you'd probably buy it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna give this card an A minus. You lose value by playing on turn one. I mean, you lose some value by playing on turn one, yeah. But uh, I mean, I kind of don't think it matters because. Either way, you're up $10. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, it's like, it depends on how much you want to greet it, but either way, I think it's always good, so. Next card here, Explorer's Cache, two-minute artifact, enters a battlefield with two counters on it. When a creature you control with a counter on it dies, put a counter on Explorer's Cache. Okay, enter the battlefield with two counters on it. When a creature you control with a plus one counter and it dies, put a counter back on the cache. Tap move a counter from Explorer's Cache onto target creature, active only sorcery. Okay, so this is uh this is basically <clears throat> this is basically a plus one plus one counters bank. 
which is cool because it doesn't work with Explore. Kind of convoluted, but I kind of do like it. Um, kind of do like it. Activate only the sorcery. Fair enough. Ah, guess I'll give this card a B minus. I mean, I do like it. I do like it. A little bit convoluted, but I, the cost is quite low. Um, and I think that has a lot of value over the course of the game. I like it. Okay, sure. It's uh, a lot of investment that we that we're seeing in green at the moment. Next card here, glimpse the core. Two mana sorcery, choose one. Search the library for a basic forest card. Put in the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Damn. Okay. Return target or return target cave from your bat uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay. I mean, very serviceable. So basically, like a rampant growth or whatever. Which we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, it only gets forest. And he's still decent. Probably B minus or something. B minus C plus. B minus C plus. Is it that is it that decent? I mean it's fine, I guess. It's fine. Is it whatever? It's kinda of whatever if you think about it. Because the two mana dart frog is basically the same thing most of the time. I think it's really whatever, actually. Let's give it a C plus. I don't even think that this is necessarily better than uh, <clears throat> than the three mana ramp card. The three mana ramp card fixes for any color. It can also grab caves, and it can also uh, be a six six later or a five five later. This card is like not that much value. Sure, on turn two, you can curve into a four drop on turn three, but. Like, games and magic don't really come down to that anymore. Um, yes, actually, I think this card's whatever. I'm actually just going to give it a C-, minus even. I actually don't think I care. Next card here, Tendril of the Myco Tyrant. Myco Tyrant. 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Fungus Wizard. 7 mana, put 7 counters on target non-creature land you control. Okay. Becomes a 0-0 zero, zero fungus with haste. It's still land. This guy's a chonker. So it's a bear at the floor. Then you can pay 7 mana to make uh, your creatures 7-7s. Seven, haste as well. With haste, mainly just to not mess around with it. If you play that land this turn, like is one out, one out of your 8 forests or whatever. The one that you played, it just gets around that. It's pretty cool, to be honest. Pretty cool. I like this guy, to be honest. I'm gonna give this guy an A minus. <clears throat> this sort, this sort of card I'm looking for. Green is kind of confused about how green's supposed to be playing out, but honestly, this guy gives you a reason just to play like ramp tribal. This card's pretty darn cool. We'll see if it plays out well though. I like it. Let's give it a minus. Works well with manlands. That's true as well. People told me that there's some manlands in the format. I haven't seen them yet, but next card here, Cody Scavenger. Three mana, three two to send four. Enters the battlefield. If there are four more permanent cards in your graveyard, there are four more permanent cards in your graveyard. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's going digging. That's pretty cool. Um. So some some value card advantage in green. Hard to say. I mean, pretty decent, I guess. It's like C plus B B minus range. I I just give this guy B minus, I guess. Raccoon tier, raccoon. Like the main thing is that most of the green cards have not been that interesting. Like the green cards have been fine, but not that interesting. Uh, outside of maybe like a card like Twists and Turns or something, which seems pretty pushed. But like uh, the green cards, the green strategies seem whatever to me at the moment. <clears throat> uh, it's definitely not as good as Tough Cookie, you no. Know? The, um, the, uh, the, uh, Michael Tiger, the Michael Tyrant. I don't think it's as good as Tough Cookie. Like, Tough Cookie is a nutty card. All right. Spelunking. What, is, what does spelunking mean, chat? 
spelunking doesn't mean like uh like like roping down or whatever going into caves spelunking means going into caves beating your meat yeah that sounds more like it actually three man enchantment when spelunking enters the battlefield draw a card then you may put a land card from hand onto the battlefield okay you put a cave in this battlefield this way you gain four life lands you control enter the battlefield untapped that's pretty cool kind of an awesome type awesome card yo this card honestly is broken in a lot of different formats if you think about it because there there are a lot of these lands enter the battlefield tapped because they because they generate a ton of mana this is actually like a super cool card for older formats like you have that one land where it's like a sacrifice two lands or whatever and then it enters the battlefield tapped add three mana something like that Card's awesome. I actually like it. I like it. Uh, so it's in limited. It's kind of a glorified cantrip, but uh, I do like it. I wonder how good it's gonna be though. Probably not that good. Probably not that good. I'm gonna give this card probably a C minus. It does seem uh, playable. Yeah, Lotus Field. Yeah, Lotus Field. So, Lo Lotus Field plus a Ammo to Vigor, something like that. Yeah, most of the caves come in tapped. I think that it's, like, pretty marginal, though. So, one thing that I see a lot from players is players are always like, Oh, Desi, aren't you scared of running Evolving Wilds? Your land is going to come in tapped. While at the same time, these bastards are putting Crystal Grotto in every single deck. Like, come on, guys. Please. It's not that big of a deal. Really not that big of a deal. <laughs> like, stop it. Stop it. Today is an intervention for you to stop playing cards like Crystal Grotto. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, next card here, Thrashing Bronzedon. He's back, but honestly, this card art makes, Chris, makes uh, uh, Bronzedon look like a badass. It honestly looks way stronger. It looks way stronger. Like, compare this card to this card here. <laughs> okay, like, this card is, like, pretty good, but not that strong, right? Because the artwork is, like, it's fine. But then you look at this card. Damn. This card just went up a full, a full grade rating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this guy deals more damage than the old one, for sure. Does this guy really not have Trample? That's weird. Looks like he has Trample. Okay, anyways, 3 mana, 3, 4. Sacrifice Bronson on Destroy Artifact and Enchantment. Great card. Not, not much to complain about. Well statted. It does everything you want. Instant speed ability. Uh, probably give this guy A minus, B plus. Probably B plus. <clears throat> yeah, it, it definitely went from like a B minus to a B plus, right? I think so. It's, it's thrashing instead of politely moving about. That's true. Next card here. Colossodactyl. That is cool, man. This guy's on a gondola or something. <clears throat> four mana, four five, reads trample. Well, you know, I'm a simple man. I see four, <laughs> I see four mana, four five, reads trample. I'm in. I like that. Uh, just give this card what an A minus. Fuck it. It's like, I feel like green, green needs to be pushed these days. Like green needs stats. Everything else is getting, everything else is outstanding green. Green is starting to look small in this day and age. You know, blue blue has like these giant flying vigilant uh fairies and whatever. And green is just not really sizing up like I like that. It's not honestly it could be bigger. Fuck it, just make it a 4-6. I mean, it's small enough to not require an enter the battlefield, but yeah. Generally, like these big cards need to enter the battlefield. Next card here, Jade Seed Stones, 4 mana artifact. Seed stones enters the battlefield, distribute Three counters among one, two, or three target creatures you control. Then it has craft with a creature. That's pretty cool. Okay, so four mana for three counters. Then craft with a creature. It is a Jade Heart Attendant. Seven, seven. Enter the battlefield. You gain life equal to the mana value of the card used to craft it. Okay. So say if you have the big forest cycling 
monster in your graveyard. Uh, you gain life. You can gain seven life. That's pretty cool. I do like it. There, there does seem to be like a counters type blah 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 deck, and I think that's really the only way to play green, like a base green deck. So you're just playing creatures and putting counters on them, kind of thing. Doesn't sound that exciting, but uh, you know, Timmy, Timmy, Timmy finds his own assignment, right? I do like it. I don't know what to rate it. Maybe B minus. The creature behind it is like very large as well. All right, next card here, Earthshaker Dreadmaw. What's he doing, by the way? Is he humping a city? Six mana, six six trample. When Dreadmaw enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other dinosaur. All right, well, that seems like a good reason to play dinosaurs. It seems ex extremely pushed, actually. Colossal Dreadmaw, <clears throat> Colossal Dreadmaw Plus. It does not draw a card for itself, which would just be absurd, probably. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think I want to give this card like an A+, plus, probably. <laughs> He's shitting a city out. <clears throat> I think I want to give it an A+, plus for limited. Um, this is basically just a bomb rare. Like, if this card were rare, nobody would bat an eye, I think. And it's actually a reason to play dinos. We haven't seen that many reasons to play dinos. I think A+, plus is good. <laughs> You're the first dinos every draft and nobody can stop you. I mean, honestly, the dinos are pretty well sized. Maybe, maybe you can just play dinos. Maybe it's not bad. All right. Uh, moving into the rares here for green. Jade Light Spelunker. All right. X and a green, 1-1. One, one. When Spelunker enters the battlefield, it explores X times. Okay. So it just scales with the game. And it's super explore. It can get you a bunch of lands and stuff. I mean, just very good card. I don't know what there is to complain about. Um, it can be large. It can be not 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 large. You have a lot of lands at hand now. Honestly, this kind of feels like lands the format, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think I think probably just give this guy an A or A plus as well. Kind of splashable. I'll I'll just give an A plus. You love the Spelunker? I love Spelunkering. I love Spelunkering. Uh, the format looks very, very good, very fun, and very inspired so far, so... I'm pretty happy with it overall. Interpret Paleontologist. 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Tap, add a mana of any color. 2 mana, exile target card from a graveyard. And you may cast dinosaur creature spells from among cards you own with... You own Exiled with Paleontologist, okay? We cast Dinosaur Creature Spells from cards you own Exiled with Paleontologist. Wait, what? You cast Dinosaur Creature Spells from cards you own Exiled. What? Exi what does that mean? Exiled with Paleontologist. If you cast a spell this way, that creature enters the battlefield with a finality cast. Ah, so it wants you to exile dinos from your own graveyard. I see. Oh, you can also exile dinos from your opponent's graveyard. That's, I see as well. You cast a spell this way that enters you with a battle with, with a finality counter. Okay, so pretty cool. I think a lot of implications for constructed as well. Uh, Atali, seven mana Atali is still a dino. Um, just very good mana dork. Does everything you want. Has utility on it, as well as a card advantage. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool card. Huh. This is, like, almost borderlying S. You own. Oh, really? Uh, you own Exile. Oh, okay, never mind. So, you can only cast from your own graveyard, I see. Probably just an A+, then. Yeah, probably just an A+. Plus. Yeah. Okay, next card here. Growing Rights of Itlamok. Three mana legendary enchantment. This art is hilarious, by the way. What is happening there? When Growing Rights of Itlamok enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may be able to creature card from among them, put it into your hand. Okay. 
Put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. At the end of your end step, if you control four more creatures, transform growing rights of Itlamok. Okay. This is Itlamok Cradle of the Sun. It's a legendary land. It's not a cave. Tap at a green. Tap at a green for each creature you control. All right. So, a Gaia's Cradle variant. <clears throat> Three mana, you get a creature. And then if four more creatures transform it, you get a bunch of mana. Honestly, a bunch of mana in this format seems pretty decent. Seems pretty decent. <clears throat> I think I'm going to start this card off at probably just a flat B, though. It seems, it seems more luxurious than, than actually core or good. It's perfectly fine, right? Perfectly fine. It replaces itself, whatever. But uh, I think B is fine for this. Like, B, B+. Plus. Give it a B plus. Can't be a cave as is a reprint. Oh, is it a reprint? Oh my god. Wait, this is a reprint from normal Ixalan. I don't even re remember this card. I don't even remember this card from Ixalan. Dude, I literally don't even remember it. I don't think I ever seen anyone play it, and I don't think I played it myself either in Ixalan. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. How, how did it play out in normal Ixalan? It was like whatever, right? Uh, let's give it a B minus. I think it is better in this set, probably. Like, there's a lot of ways to spend mana. But yeah. All right. Anyways, next card here: Pugnacious Hammer Skull. Three mana, six six. Oh, jeez. Whenever Hammer Skull attacks, while you don't control another dinosaur, put a stun counter on it. Okay. I mean, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I like it. So, if you don't have another dinosaur, it can attack every other turn. It can also just block forever. I mean, the card is uh, pretty nutty overall. Give this card an A+. It doesn't really qualify for S tier, I don't think. But uh, every three turns, attack. Then put a stun counter. It doesn't untap next turn. What do you mean every three turns? I mean, it's basically... Every, yeah, I mean, it's the same, like, we're saying the same thing. It's, e it's e e either every three turns it can attack, or it doesn't attack every other turn. Same shit. Just give it Vigilance. I, I don't think there are ways to give, it, give cards Vigilance in this format. I might be wrong. Maybe in white. Okay, next card is Sentinel of the Nameless City. Three mana, three, four. Vigilance. Whenever Sentinel of the Nameless City enters the battlefield or attacks, create a map token. Solid value card, sure, I guess. Uh, I don't think it's S tier. It's A plus again, I guess. It's A plus again. Not really game breaking or anything. Just a lot of value. A lot of value, good stats, good, good keyword. Probably playable and constructed. I don't know what deck it'll go in, but. Yeah, easy to cast. Just A+. Plus. Next card here, Bedrock Tortoise. 4 mana, 0, 6. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have hexproof. Creatures you control have hexproof. Okay. Really cool card, by the way. That's awesome. Uh, each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. All right. So it's like a tail, like a, like a tail swipe type card. <clears throat> Um, but it's not a downside of, uh, forcing your bigger things to do less damage. So, kind of fix as well. I mean, it's a 4 mana 6-6 six, six for all intents and purposes. And then, there are, like, 1 mana 0-3s and stuff in the format, right? Pretty cool. <clears throat> I like it. Uh, give this guy an A. Yeah, it doesn't fight, I guess, because it's combat damage. But yeah, it doesn't fight. It should be fine, though. Next card here, Hulking Raptor. 4 mana, 5, 3, War 2. Beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add green, green. Okay, so... It does not... So you don't get mana the turn that you play it. But every other main phase one, assuming that this guy's on the board, you get double green. This guy's, like, pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. It also has War 2 as well, so a, a soft a soft behind 
uh it it can get blocked by three ones and stuff but uh yeah it's giving you a lot of mana that's an insane amount of mana don't think it's s tier either though it's close it's close probably does another a plus or what i mean this guy's kind of kind of immortal <clears throat> on curve hmm Ward means if somebody targets it with a spell or ability, they need to pay two extra. So like a pacifism will cost four mana on this guy, for example. Probably just A+. Plus. I don't think three toughness is rough. I think that's uh, perfect, perfectly well designed for a card like this. Like, otherwise it doesn't make sense, right? I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely in the A range. I don't, I don't see it being in the B range. I, I was just considering whether or not to give it an S. Probably not. Our next card here, Cosmium Confluence. Five mana sorcery, choose three. You may choose the same more mode more than once. Search your library for a cave card, put it in your battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Or put three plus one plus one counters on a cave you control. It becomes a, a zero zero elemental creature with haste and a still land. Or destroy target enchantment. Hmm. Very large magic card. <clears throat> So if you have three caves in your deck, you can ramp from five to eight, to maybe nine with a land drop the turn after. You can also just make your caves on the board into creatures. They likely don't attack on the turn that you play it. Or or you can uh disenchant and it disenchant something. Five mana nine nine. It kind of doesn't feel like five mana nine nine though. <clears throat> it's like it's like five mana, and then you get three threes on board, and then you're down on mana to some extent. Seems like very fair. Seems very very fair. Seems very very fair. I mean, it's powerful, and it's balance. Can't target the cave from option one to the option two. Are you sure? I think you can. Uh <clears throat> I believe you can because the second the second option is not targeting. Yeah, so there's no target. So which means that it goes in the order of the card, right? So it will get a cave, put a battleful tap, and then you can put counters on it. So uh yeah, it actually does work. I don't think it's broken though. Um, let's just start this card off in A minus, maybe. All right, and then that is it for the rares here in green. Moving on to the mythics, it looks like I have a missing mythic. Anyways, uh, oh Watley, let's pull Watley real quick here. All right. Watley, Poet of Unity. Three mana, two, three. Human Warrior Bard. When Watley enters the battlefield, <clears throat> search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put in your hand, then shuffle. Okay. Five mana, exile Watley, then return her to the battlefield, transform it under its owner's control, activate only the sorcery. Okay. Oh, what is that? What is that? I didn't expect that. Roar of the Fifth People. Damn. Okay. Saga 1. Create two 3-3 three, three dino creature tokens. Okay. Uh, well, that's already broken. Saga 2. Roar of the Fifth People gains creatures you control have tap. Add, add, a, add a Naya mana. Saga 3. Search your library for dinosaur card. Reveal it. Put in your hand and shuffle. <clears throat> Saga 4, dinosaurs you control gain double strike and trample until end of turn. So she's basically sacrificing herself for, for the dinos. Ah. Huh. I mean, what's there to complain about, right? 3 mana 2 3 replaces herself with a basic land. And then uh, for actually a very small amount of mana, 5 mana. So the activation is coming very soon. And you basically win the game, I'm pretty sure. So I guess this is an S here. Yeah, interesting three-color saga as well. I believe it's just an S. Right. 
Proof x has razors to, pray to shave armpits. I mean, I, I assume that they can use it with any sharp blade, yeah. Ask if you can find a dino. I mean, how can you not find a dino? And even if you don't find a dino, isn't it still just good? Like, there's literally nothing to complain about, right? Just ask. Next card here. O'Hare Caslem. Deepest growth. 5 mana 6 5. Trample. When O'Hare Caslem deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. Okay. I'm gonna put a creature card and or land card from among them onto the battlefield. What? <laughs> How's that okay? Put the rest in the bottom in a random order. That is unacceptable. When O'Hare Caslem dies, return it to the battlefield tapped and transformed under his owner's control. All right. This guy's a fucking beast. What is that? A butterfly god? What the fuck is that? Is that a butterfly hydra? That is extremely terrifying. Butterfly hydra man with a mask. What in the hell am I looking at? Becomes Temple of Cultivation. It's a land. Tap at a green. Three mana tap. Transform. Temple of Cultivation. Activate only if you control 10 or more permanents. So that counts lands as well. Only is a sorcery. This one, if I had a higher rating than S, this one would be triple S tier probably. Yeah, this card makes no sense. So, well statted, no downside. When it attacks, you get card advantage. Uh, and, and, and you put lands or creatures from them. So you can basically put in like Emmer Coil or something if you want. And then when it dies, it basically just flips back immediately, to be honest. It basically just flips back immediately. So yeah, this card is uh, completely illegal in at least 150 different countries. And in other countries, it's not illegal because they're scared of it and they don't want their country to get decimated. So yeah. All right, next card here, Galta St Stampede Tyrant. 8 mana, 12, 12. It's an Elder Dinosaur. Huh. Okay. Dude, this guy looks like... Dude, this guy looks like a race car. What the hell? Trample, when Galta enters the battlefield, put any number of creature cards per hand onto the battlefield. Awesome, awesome card, by the way. And it's not even if you cast it. This is a completely fun constructed card, by the way. Dude, that is a fun constructed card. That, that seems awesome. Like, if you can play uh, lottery, lottery dinos or something with, like... Uh, with a Tali and Galta. That sounds super fun. Super, super fun. <clears throat> like a super RNG deck or whatever. Just a Tali Galta. Um probably 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 uh ramping or something. You can even try to play like an, an omniscience deck that reanimates omniscience. There's a four mana way to reanimate to reanimate omniscience in this format too. And then you can play it with like Imidane's Recruiter or something and just OTK people. So OTK, Galta, Imidane's Recruiter with a Tali. That, that sounds fun. Oh, you oh Sneak Attack's not in Constructed though. But yeah. This guy's sick. Uh, in terms of Limited, probably still pretty good. Probably still pretty good. Uh, I kind of want to give him the S as well, honestly. Fight, so fight rigging is a little bit slow. I would rather try to re try to reanimate stuff, or I would try to like I don't know, just go more over the top or something. I think in this format it's still an S tier. Like you likely will only put in one or two things, but that's honestly good enough, and uh, it's just ginormous. A, a lot of mana stuffs in this format. You're already incentivized to play like these mana type decks, but yeah, I like it. I like it. So the thing is that there, there's a lot of ink, there's a lot of just accidental card advantage in the format as well. So you should have cards, yeah. You should build your deck in a way that has cards. Not vibe set seems too super bomby. I mean, isn't that what I'm looking for? Like I'm looking for super bomby. I think that those are the most fun formats in Magic. Um, <clears throat> like bomby but balanced. Seems fine. I don't see, I don't like, I don't like formats like, like, uh, Wilds of Aldrain or All, All, All Will Be One. 
This is not that fun for me. Yeah, March Dream Machine was bomby. Like, I liked it. But Mar March Dream was bomby, but balanced. Like, that that's the way I like my magic, you know? Just like I like my coffee. Ah, uh, dark and powerful. Okay, last card for green. Skullspore Nexus. Eight mana legend artifact. Plus X less a cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So say if you have a four drop, this, this costs four mana. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. Wait, what? Whenever one or more non-token creatures you shall die, create a green fungus dinosaur with a base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. Okay. So say you're in combat and two of your things die, a 2-2 two, two and a 4-4. Four, four. Then you're making a uh then then you're making a six six, okay. Tap. Two mana tap, double target creature's power until end of turn. Nah, <laughs> I love it. Seems seems giga broken, right? Seems giga broken. Uh, just give it S as well, I guess. Yeah. Seems broken. I don't see why this card would be bad. It also just has a cool instant speed ability as well. Seems giga broken, right? Yeah, and you, and you can spend 2 mana to, to make the bigger thing. So, it says non-token. So, like, to so like, you don't go infinite with itself, which is good design. But, uh, yeah, it seems like an S. Alright. I like what I see.